All right, guys, so I want to talk about this video that I stumbled across uh, featuring Tucker Carlson and a New York Times journalist, Mr. Ben Smith, whom is going to front Tucker Carlson on Tucker Carlson's alleged racism on his show. Now, I told you guys before, Tucker Carlson is one of my favorite uh, on-air news um, commentators, right, political commentators, and the reason why is because the guy... I think he performs at the highest level in this industry in regards to uh, getting the facts to people and relaying information, okay, in a way that is understandable and digestible, right? Again, I look up to Tucker Carlson as somebody that, you know, is somebody I tried to, you know, emulate or whatever, right? So <laughs> with that being said, uh, Ben Smith, uh, because he's a part of mainstream liberal media, is going to confront Tucker Carlson on his alleged racism, which in my opinion, as a black person, um, I don't know why they tried to accuse Tucker Carlson of being some type of racist. I haven't ever heard the guy say anything that I would deem to be racist in my life, okay? Uh, but he's going to try to confront Tucker Carlson on his alleged racism, and it's not going to go well for this guy because Tucker clearly articulates his positions and why he's not racist, but it's not going to be enough for this guy because he has to push the mainstream media narrative that Tucker Carlson is some flaming white supremacist, but he has no evidence whatsoever to back up that claim. So I want to play uh, some of this clip uh, so you guys get the gist of the conversation here. Nice closet. Um, ben and, Smith, and, and, ladies and gentlemen. And, and, I, and I'm, I'm, I'm glad you agreed to join us. Um, Someone just texted me and said you were pretty tough with Taylor Lorenz, which I was heartened to hear, but it's easy to hurt her feelings. So I hope you'll check I'm, your I'm privilege. Just, I'm just me. hoping you'll, you'll let me ask questions and not steamroll me because you're, you're a professional and I'm not. Well, um, you're the tough one, Ben. Uh, but, but I have been watching your show a lot, and, and, and you, you spend a lot of time laughing about labels that are thrown at you. Racist, white supremacist, the most... Uh, host of the most racist show in the history of cable television. Actually, I'd rather not ask you about the labels, but sort of give you an opportunity to talk about what you believe. Um, and, and to begin with, you know, do you believe white people are superior to other races? No. Yeah. So, just listen to this question, bro. Do you believe white people are superior to other races? <laughs> Incredible. Incredible first question. Oh, of course not. And the funny thing is, that's you know, let, one let, of those. let me let I me think let there me are a lot of, I let think me just stop on the yes no question there and just to, to put it a little differently before you respond Wait, which is no, no, actually, do you think that, do you think question, that white people have I, more I of a claim on America superior in any way do you think that no, white people I'm, have I'm some a, claim on America that people of other races of don't of course not i mean first of all i'm a christian so i think god made everybody and therefore everyone has equal value in his eyes that's the essential value of every person is the same but the idea that I harbor some sort of deep racial animus is like, I mean, I, I think there are a lot of criticisms you could level at me. I think sometimes I overstate the case. I get pissed. I can be very nasty. You've been on the receiving end of that. I know you can vouch for that. But the idea that I'm, a, you know, that I, I mean, if, if you were to look at my texts or listen to my personal conversations or read my mind, you would find no instance where I'm like, I'm mad at black people. 100% of the people that I'm mad at are well-educated white liberals. In my mind, the sort of archetype of the person I don't like is like a 38-year-old female white lawyer with a barren personal life. Ding, 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 ding. Um, I feel totally Carson on this. And the reason why, because as a black conservative, a lot of people try to characterize us uh, as just attacking black folks. All y'all do is attack black folks all day, blah, blah, blah. But if you actually look at my videos, right, in each and every last one of my videos, most of my videos, I'm actually talking about white liberals, right? Most of my beef is with white liberals, right? A vast majority of my videos, I am making fun or criticizing white liberals, okay? But they try to say, oh, no, no, you're, you're just going after black folks. Again, same thing with Tucker Carson here. Most of the people that he's going after are white liberals, right? But for some reason, they're trying to paint the guy as a flaming racist because he occasionally says things that, you know, 
could be characterized as telling the truth about, I don't know, black people, right? Uh, saying things that the liberal media doesn't want to be said about black people. Same thing with me, right? Saying things that, you know, again, people say that you can't say about black folks. So therefore, you're anti-black, you're just attacking black people, and they ignore how the rest of your content, most of your content is just going out to white liberals. But it's not even race-based. Nobody's going out to anybody based off their race. You're just going out to people based off of whether or not I agree or disagree with them politically, right? I mean, that's politics at the end of the day, okay? But again, because um, the Democrat mantra is uh, if we don't agree with you, then you're racist, then they throw that label on anybody, including Tucker Carlson, who's white, okay? Now, if you're not white and you don't agree with Democrats, then they call you a, a, a white supremacist or they say that you are the black face of white supremacy or, or they'll say something like you're sell out or something like that. You know how it goes. That's yeah. who yells at me on airplanes. And so I always say to people, like, you're racist. Okay, let me, let me, before, I okay, let, let, let me. <laughs> so I'm not mad at black people. Like, what are you talking about? The, can, can I, I just let like me, you. let me you're show horrible. you, let me guess, let me show you, I think, why people react this way. I think we, we have a clip I just wanted to show you. Can you, okay. Sydney, can you play that? In political terms, this policy is called the great replacement, the replacement of legacy Americans with more obedient people from faraway countries. So, so, Tucker, what's what's a legacy American? People who were born here, black people, white people, Hispanic people, Asian people, people who are citizens, people who participated, hold on, generationally in our system. Ding, 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 ding. <laughs> this guy tried to get him with a gotcha. What's a legacy American? Basically implying that, oh, it's just whites. As if only white people have been in this country since the founding of this country, right? That he automatically must be talking about white people if he says legacy Americans. Again, um, black people have been here since the founding of this country. White people have been here since the founding of this country. Native Americans have been here since the founding of this country. I believe Asian people, uh, Chinese people have been here almost since the founding of this country as well too. There's a lot, Hispanic people have been here since the founding of this country. There's a lot of people who have been here since the founding of this country, and it's not even just people who've been here since the founding of this country, it's people who've been here for, you know, multiple generations, okay? That is who he's talking about. People who have made America their home and have culturally become American, okay? That's just who he's talking about. And yes, the Democrat Party, um, it, it seems like um, they're not necessarily fond of those people, right? That's kind of what it seems like. And a lot of them don't buy the program of the modern Democratic Party because it doesn't serve them. And so the center of the Democratic electoral strategy going forward, I'm not guessing, I, they talk about it constantly, you're a journalist, you must have noticed, is to bring in new people who will vote for them. Now that- do, do, you, do you- Facts, they always get on Tucker Carlson for pushing the replacement theory. When the people that talk about demographic change, because that's basically what replacement theory is, right? It's just demographic change. The people who talk about that the most and celebrate it are the liberal media. It is the liberal media, okay? I played a clip of them celebrating demographic change, talking about demographic change. I played it. I don't even have to play it. <laughs> you know, they're the ones that push this the most. But for some reason, they attribute Tucker Carlson as the only one in the media that is pushing this. When, again, the mainstream liberal media talk about this and they push this the most, okay? I'm just saying. I'm just saying. It's amazing to me how they just assign this to Tucker Carlson as if he's the only person that ever talks about that when the mainstream liberal media talks about it more than anybody. You think, if we're looking, let me just finish if you don't mind. This is not something that I made up or found on the internet. I don't even really go on the internet. This is something that Democrats, including you know the architect of Obama's last victory, have talked about at great lengths in pieces, monographs, on television. They've written books about it. the. Um, so this is not like some crackpot. Alex do you Jones think when you talk this about this is the central how, how strategy many, of the Democratic Party? So to be like, I can't believe many, you said um, that. You I'm mentioned going back Tucker. To that. You talked about generational inv investment. How, how many generations makes you a legacy? Oh, I I'm just saying people who live here now, including do, do you immigrants. See, do you have any, do you have any empathy? Do you have any empathy for what? somebody who sees that clip, somebody who's, you know, grand, whose parents are from India, from China, who are Jewish, and say, wow, I don't think, I, I, like, I, listen, I just see that clip. And I don't India really think this China guy includes Jewish? me in his vision no, no, of America. No, no. Slow down, okay. Well, for the most part, <laughs> What Tucker talk about is illegal immigration, not not legal 
uh, immigration. Nobody has ever rail. I've never heard a conservative rail against legal immigration. <laughs> I've never heard a conservative say, you know what? I don't like the fact that we're bringing any of these black and brown people <laughs> in these country, right? I've never heard that. But what I've had heard is that, hey, I don't like the fact that people come in here illegally. We don't know who they are. We don't know where they're from. We don't know their histories. We don't know any of that. That's why I've heard the most. I think a lot of people, most people agree that legal immigration is good, right? When you bring in smart people from other countries um, and, you know, you use them to help advance, you know, technology, science, whatever. Yeah, that's a good thing. That benefits society. That benefits us when we bring in uh, law abiding uh, legal immigrants who are smart and contribute and work hard and contribute to society and want to be American. That's great, right? We celebrate that all the time, okay? But what we, we don't want to celebrate is illegal immigration, which is what the Democrat Party wants to celebrate. Uh, no, I, I don't have any, as you said, empathy for people. Do you who, understand why they might think that? Please let me, if, if you don't mind, if I could finish. I have no empathy for people who derive their judgments about anything from 30 second clips on Media Matters. I do an hour live every single night. If you want to know what I think, I don't know that there's anyone who's more transparent about it than I am. Not all of my views are correct. Not all of them are attractive. You may laugh at some of them. You may be offended by others, but I'm very clear about what I think. I believe that people are not the sum total of their genetics. I say that constantly. And as a Christian, I really mean it. I actually buy the kind of Dr. Seuss, please, version of race understanding, which is judge a person by what he does, not by how he looks. I actually believe that. I grew up in Southern California in the 70s, and I say you, it constantly. Do you do, and but so, and yet, and yet I, somehow, when, Tucker, like, on, and I guess on, the thing, when, that, let, you know, you have, you have an hour every night, as you said. Let, let me, and I'll, second, I want to move on to some other questions. Okay, but, don't filibuster me. Uh, <laughs> um, the, but, but. You know, you are misunderstood, perhaps, in your view a lot then, both by, as you said, kind of the New York Times, but also, but also you keep having you know, sort of explicit white supremacists who have, you know, on secret message boards who work for you and you have to, I know this has been I, very painful I've for you in some cases. I've never this, even met a white supremacist. You have what these folks, you have folks who have posted, Wait, you have a so, large so, number so, of so people, where, Scott Greer, on, Blake Neff. On. I'm just curious why this you've been sort of flypaper for you're these people on your staff. You're not asking me a question. That was the question. Why have you been flypaper for breath, these racists? <laughs> I've never had a white supremacist work for me. I don't think I've ever talked to a white supremacist. I'm, I'm, please, let me finish. And I don't want to fight I'm about sure labels. Me, I'm, hold on, slow down. I'm not, I don't want to fight about labels. I don't want to fight about labels. But the dude started off the conversation with labeling Car Tucker Carson a racist, right? Labeling him as a racist, implying that he's a white supremacist. <laughs> Incredible. But now you don't want to fight about labels. Wow. I'm not sure what that means. I know that it's a slur. It's the worst thing one can be. I, I, I don't really understand the terms, but let me just say... You've had to let people go let, who let said me, objectionable stuff. Sentence. Whoa, now, Ben. I believe that people are not defined by their race, any race, black, white, Asian, pick, you know, pick a race. People are defined, their value derives from A, the fact they were created by God. I believe that. Maybe you don't. I do. And B, by what they do, by the choices they make, by who they are. They have agency. They're not, you know, part of some larger group. They're individuals. I believe in the individual. And I say that virtually every night. Now, if you don't hear that, or if you, for whatever reason, want to claim that I'm some racist... I, I don't, I don't know what to say to you. I'm, I'm stating my sincere views as reflected in my personal life and my professional life as clearly as I can. Do, do you feel that in just in, in your own career, you've been kind of discriminated against as a white Protestant? <laughs> no, no. And I, I ask I, in I, part because I, I had been told that, that Roger Ailes and that you'd sort of at some point expressed that Roger Ailes, the former head of Fox, had a preference for Irish Catholics and that it kind of held you back. <laughs> Was that? Like I've been held back. And by the way, I can say this sincerely, if I could, that I've never in my life been unhappy except because of self-pity. Self-pity is, I'm speaking for myself, but I think it's true for most people. Self-pity is the root of misery. And so I really try not to feel self-pity. I have no grounds for it anyway. I've had a, I've had a wonderful life. I have an unusually happy family. I live where I want. I say what I want. You know, I'm blessed, unlike 
a lot of journalists who are leading miserable lives. So but I don't feel sorry for myself. I don't feel I've been discriminated against. But I do believe in fairness. And I don't think you should ever hire someone on the basis of his race or sex. That's grotesque to me. It's a violation of the basic promise of the country, which is we're going to bring people from around the world who may look different, be from different backgrounds, but we're going to treat them all the same, which is to say specifically on the basis of their ability and their virtue. See, uh, the Democrat Party don't believe that, though, right? They actually believe in discriminating against people based off their race and their sex, particularly if you're a white male, right? They're totally fine with that, okay? They don't believe in treating people equally at all, okay? Which is why the Democrat Party has become an anti-American party. On the choices they make, not on the genes they have. That's let, let, Nazi shit. I'm against that. Let, I'm, I'm serious. Let, let me ask you about a different subject, which is January 6th. And I think... Well, no, I, I, I kind of like this stuff. You're not responding to me. <laughs> no, I'm, so I'm not responding totally to you. I'm, I'm interviewing you. you does that sound racist to you? You just suggested I'm a white supremacist. You know, I that, yeah, I, like, I, yeah, I found that clip disturbing. I think the, you know, the, it, the, well, the language of replacement theory, clip, which you've popularized. Clip, no, he has not popularized it. The mainstream liberal media talks about it all the time. Again, this guy is just th throwing smear after smear after smear at Tucker Carlson, not letting him talk, not let him articulate his positions. Because, again, when you accuse somebody of being a racist and a white supremacist and pushing replacement theory, Oh, uh, yeah, you need to let them talk. You need to give them some time to thoroughly explain their positions and not just try to get you with gotcha, right? I'm going to tell you, Tucker Carson's handled this pretty well because I don't know, I would have exploded at this guy. <laughs> I would have exploded at this guy. The language of replacement theory is like specifically the language used by, by neo-Nazis to recruit people to their cause. It has been obviously I'm not suggesting some straight line between words and actions, but it is the a phrase I'm that has been used by mass shooters. I wonder if you don't have any so compunction or regret no about popularizing believes. that. This is why you are considered correctly a propagandist and not a journalist, right. because I just explained in detail with total sincerity what I believe you ignored it and invoked mass shooters. So that's not what you I just asked did. you how you felt about it. Let's I actually do want to ask well, you about something. I, 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 I'd, I'd like to ask about it. I'd like to ask you about something that actually I think we probably have more common how ground how ridiculous on. you are, and I think it's evident to any fair person watching. I'm, I guess I'm trying to give you an opportunity to respond to things no, that have not. been said and written I'm, about you, but let's move like, to something that I'm sure, really not right, looking theory, to have like, a Does this sound like racist ideology? You. And you're like, oh, I, I'm disturbed by the Media Matters clip for eight seconds. Like, the, um, are you being serious? Tucker. <laughs> Facts. I think Tucker handled that pretty well. Th this guy, again, is a propagandist pushing this idea that Tucker Carlson is some type of flaming racist, which I, I, they don't really have any evidence of outside of the whole replacement theory thing that the mainstream of media talks about more than anybody. Right. Uh, but again, uh, this is just what they do. Right. This is their jobs. They're not there to tell the truth. They're not there to get a facts. And I think Tucker handled himself pretty well. Let me know what you guys think. Make sure you you like, comment, and subscribe. Most importantly, share a black conservative perspective. Peace.